Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now, nothing major going on in the news lately. I mean, everyone's heard the grinder and the fucking stupidity of Jennifer Lawrence. And everybody's been talking about that this past week. How dumb both those situations are. If you want to see more about that stuff, you can go look at other places. Because there's plenty of people that's talked about it. Uh, so nothing major going on this week that I saw other than that. Except for Elon Musk keeps getting attacked. But we knew that was coming. Anytime you try to go against the Nazi socialists and communists that are trying to invade our country and take away our rights and freedom, you're going to get that. And they're all trying to attack Elon. Not surprisingly. So anyways, that's all the big news. Moving on to what I really want to talk about. Okay, I just want to touch base on the Willow show. Uh, Disney, of course, we all know it just destroyed Willow. But there's one thing in this last episode that was just fucking retarded. These writers do not know what they're doing. Or they do know what they're doing. Destroying the franchise. But anyways... Willow, the original movie, the sorcerer or magic users had unlimited magic. In this fucking TV show, they're trying to make it to where, uh, you know, they, once they have, they use up their magic, they're done. They're no longer sorcerers. They only have a limited amount of it. That's the dumbest shit I've ever seen or heard. But whatever. And I just thought that was asinine and dumb. They're not, they don't read the source material. They make their own shit up. Uh, it's like them fucking activists trying to throw tomato soup and shit on the Mona Lisa and them paintings or whatever. You know, they don't fucking have any respect for the creator's fucking art. Uh, they want to steal and shit on all these creators' fucking original artwork. And it's bullshit. You know? Stop. Go make your own shit and stop trying to shit on other, steal and shit on other fucking creators' fucking content. Fuck off, Disney. So, moving on, let's get on to talk about what I really want to talk about. About a month ago, I got a game and I just finished it up about a week or so ago. And the game's called Darkstone. Now, there is a PS version and there is a PC version. I played the PS version. The PC version, a little bit different. You have uh, uh, more slots in your belt uh, and your magic, and you've got you know little side quests where you can do get more money. Uh, you have a co-op two-player mode, and uh, they allow you to do all the quests, not just half of the quest. In the PS version, there's only half the quest. They, uh, and they're random. Uh, they're not in order. They just choose which, which half of the quest you get to do. Uh, and you only have like a couple of slots for your belt and your magic. Now, also, the story is basically you got to hunt down these seven crystals, give them to a sorcerer, and then he'll create what's called a time bomb. And you get to use this time bomb on an evil sorcerer who's turned himself into a dragon. 
and you stop him for like 30 seconds from be being able to regenerate his health that in order for you to have time to kill him. Now, there are normally eight lands, the eighth one being where the, the bad guy is. And then you have to go through seven lands to get seven crystals. Each land has some monsters that you can walk around the land and kill for experience and, and gold and items. Also, each, each land has a dungeon in it. Each dungeon or quest. You'll find a quest on each land and they have a dungeon and the dungeon usually consists of four levels. Now this is basically a Diablo clone. In other words, a dungeon crawler. I like dungeon crawler games. Basically an action, action RPG. They're all right to me. I like the Diablo games. Even though I've never played Diablo 3 or I'd, I've just played the first two and I really like them. Um, anyways. It gives you random quests. The only quests, I, I do, pretty much did mostly all the quests. There's only one quest that really got to me. It pissed me off really bad. Uh, I don't know what's called, but there's a chest right in the middle of like a moat or stream with some fence posts around it. Uh, you have to constantly go back and forth between the dungeon and uh, uh, the land to get it done. Uh, you've got to uh, appease some type of god with food uh, to get this magnifying glass to read this signpost which is tell you supposed to tell you how to get to the chest but it doesn't. It only tells you half-ass where to go. And if you step incorrectly anywhere around that chest uh, you blow up and you die. Your character dies. It's a minefield. Now, you have to be precise, and I mean precise, with where you step or your character dies. And it was just annoying. It took me a hundred times to figure out how to get to the chest. Now, I don't mind games where they give you quests where you get to figure out you know, like kind of like a puzzle. You kind of got to try to figure out uh, how to complete the quest. What I, what irritates me is when certain games like this only half-ass give you clues and they don't tell you exactly where to go or what to do. You kind of just have to wander around and figure it out on your own. You know, like I said, I don't mind trying to figure out skills and puzzles. I like that kind of stuff, but when it really gives you the most vague clues and you have no idea and it doesn't complete the clue or anything like that, doesn't really explain how to do anything, it really irritates me. It pisses me off. I don't like that kind of crap. So that was the bad thing about the quest. Now, you have four main classes. You've got your priest, your sorcerer, your warrior, and your thief, or rogue, or whatever. Uh, you can play as fem female or male character. Each class has a particular attribute. You have to level up as high as you can in order to get the items in your particular class because you have to have so much in that particular tribute to be able to get that particular item in that class. Now you don't have to use the items in your class like weapons and armor. You can use different classes weapons and armor. But to get the best ones you're going to have to level up that tribute and you can only get it in your class. Uh, there's four tributes. Magic for the sorcerer strength for the warrior, dexterity for the thief, rogue, or vitality, health for the priest. Um, 
you can only go so far in one particular tribute with the other uh, 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 classes. For instance, like the sorcerer can only go so high in strength. Put points on the strength attribute. It, it levels you off at a certain point. But you can keep going with the magic, which is what the sorcerer's main attribute is. Um, there are like five vendors in town. Uh, you have one vendor who sells you skills for your particular class. Now, each class has two particular skills that they are most proficient in. Uh, that doesn't mean one of the other classes won't have one of those particular skills either. Uh, but there's two skills that they're really good at. Um, for example, uh, none of the other classes have the warrior skill uh, repair, which is basically repairing a weapon's durability. Each weapon has a high durability or, or particular number on how high their, the durability of the weapon is or the armor and you have to keep that repaired or eventually you know the more you fight the more degraded the weapon or armor becomes and you lose it or if you try to sell it and it's really low in durability you're not going to get much money for it um, but the skills are fairly as money wise goes okay for the most part they do start getting expensive uh, the higher in level you get to them. I think you can only go so high in the levels like I think mine went up to like seven or eight is as high as I could get it uh, and then the next vendor is your magic vendor uh, most of his stuff is all really really outrageously expensive uh, the amulets and the uh, books in particular the rings as well uh, most of that is all very very expensive and you don't get that kind of money until way later in the towards the end of the game now the potions and the scrolls they're okay but I don't use you know as money wise price goes but <clears throat> I really didn't use the scrolls very much except for magic door I bought magic door scrolls until I could get the book to learn the magic skill magic door all right which basically in Diablo is portal uh, portal scroll or scroll town portal they just call it magic door in this one now you also have one vendor that was useless he was the food vendor the only thing he was really good for is selling artifacts that you may collect on a quest that you need to accomplish a particular quest after you're done with that quest you can go to him and sell those artifacts for a good amount of money otherwise he just sells you food which food does it, it can help like gain or, or regain health and, and, and mana but you have so many potions and so many uh, mana pools and, and, and health pools in the uh, dungeons that you really don't need them so it's it's pretty much useless uh, the next one is a woman she will cure curses and she will identify items for you if your character does not have the identify skill. A couple of the characters do not carry the identify skill, so you have to use her to identify magical items. Now, the curse thing is pointless and useless. You can tell what the objects are that are cursed. There's no point in fucking... Because they're all negative, even if you do identify them. You don't ever want to wear them, because they're all, all the curse objects are always a negative you don't want them so you get rid of them sell them whatever and you're not going to get much money for them anyway um, the last vendor of course is your uh, blacksmith now you can buy your uh, 
classes weapons here now again you don't have to use your particular class's weapons you can buy other weapons from other classes but in order to get the best weapons and the best armor in your class you have to level up that attribute really high that's for your class like example the sorcerer has to have really high magic to get the best sorcerer weapons uh, because the other attributes they level off to where you can only go so high in them uh, now there are particular weapons and armor that you have to have a little bit of one attribute and then your class is a tribute really high uh, there are some items like that uh, the other thing that the blacksmith does is he will repair uh, your your weapons and armor for you as well the durability uh, the warrior class is the only one who ha does have this ability this skill set and it's best whenever you find weapons and sh such on the field repair them with your warriors skill and then sell them because the higher the durability the more money you're going to get out of that weapon now if you do it through the blacksmith well he's not you got to pay for it anyway and then you're basically defeating the purpose by selling it to him don't sell don't use the blacksmith to repair your weapons and shit like that uh, unless you're using them you're already using them and you want to keep them that's the only time you do it otherwise use the warrior skill uh, unless you don't are not playing as the warrior then just sell them now As far as the first couple quests, it's random for the PS version. Uh, you can get through them fairly easy. They're, they're not really hard. The first two dungeons, two quests or whatever, uh, they're not hard. It's after that that it gets to be a pain in the ass. The game gets ridiculous. Re or, I mean, it does get really hard. And this is you know you're going through as a beginner I mean it starts getting really hard because a lot of your enemies after that the first two lands they start using missile projectiles at you throwing axes shooting arrows uh, throwing magic at you and it's a pain in the fucking ass uh, at first anyway because your character's not high enough in levels uh, yeah, you get fairly decent levels until after the first two dungeons. After that, it's a pain in the fucking ass. Because you got way too many fucking shooting at you and trying to hit you. Uh, the Now, you can offset this with the magic skill. Uh, you want your magic so high in, because... You can learn particular magics in uh, uh, from books. Now, there's like four or five tiers of magic that it has like this circle, and you learn so much magic in like skill level one, skill level two, three, four, five. But the bigger the magic, the higher your magic skills got to be to learn that particular magic. And I never. I never got past the second tier in any of the classes. Uh, it's just too much. It's they they want you to learn like have like 140 magic uh, just to get to level three tier and shit. It's just yeah, they want you to get like way up there magic to learn them fucking magic skills. Now. I, I didn't really learn a whole bunch of the magic. I just didn't bother with it. It was just, like I said, too much. Um, I did want 
certain, like, I usually went around 50 in my magic skill. Because uh, to, to learn all the skills in the first tier or circle. Um, and you can read multiple books to raise the skill level of the magic in that particular type of magic. Like, there was one particular magic that I used all the time, and it was called Berserker, because not only did it heal you, uh, it boosted some of your attributes, like strength and dexterity made you a little bit faster, but I mainly used it because it would heal you, uh, as, you know, for a limited time, like 30 seconds or better, depending on how level, high level of skill you got it in like how many books did you read the more book like say you read uh, three books then it's going to be at level three and it'll give you a little bit more time each time you read it for the spell to last most of the others were useless almost all the other magic skills were pretty much useless uh i had seen a read up where the skill uh, or magic skill called Absorb was supposed to be your best magic skill, but Absorb didn't do jack shit. Every time I used it, it didn't do nothing. Uh, it's supposed to, like, drain your enemy's life, and it doesn't do it for me. I don't know what people are talking about, because that's not what that magic skill does. All it does is, I don't know, it, it gives you, like, five life points from your enemy and then that's it it's supposed to constantly every time you're attacking him it's supposed to be like a vampiric spell it's supposed to drain them of their life and it doesn't do that so it was useless like i said berserker is the only good magic there is now they do have a reflection spell but it only lasts for like five seconds so it doesn't, you're constantly having to use magic, and you can only use the magic once or twice, and then you're done. So you get like a 10 second burst, and then you don't have any more mana left. It's just dumb. It don't really help. So I didn't like it. Um, and you pretty much would want that through most of the game, because all the missiles that are being shot at you. It's just redonkulous. And I don't care how high your vitality is, them throwing magic or, or shooting or throwing axes at, them fuckers always knock down your health like in one or two hits. It was just re ridiculous. It was a pain in the ass. I hated it. Diablo was not like that. Yo, know, it took time for them to knock down your health. Not in this game. It was like one or two hits and you're dead. It was dumb. Um, the one thing that uh, kind of irritated me, but I still dealt with it, is uh, I don't know why the creators made it to where uh, they made the dungeons really dark and hard to see. I mean, you don't need the light spell and you don't need the torch really which was useless anyway but you can still see it's just really dark uh, but you can still see what you were doing most of the time so I don't I don't understand why they put that in there or why they did it that way it was just kind of dumb but anyways uh, the boss the main guy that time bomb didn't always work. Uh, number two, you can't do melee fighting. Uh, not just with the boss, but most of the characters in this game. Being a melee fighter will get you killed. You need something that you can, you need to use the throwing axes or the bow and arrow. I just, otherwise you're going to get demolished fast all the time they made that shit really difficult for a melee fighter you can't you can't do it 
I don't care how high your fucking AC is, your armor class, it don't help. Especially with the boss. One hit, you're dead, dude. I'm telling you, you can't do it. Uh, they, and plus, he has these two winged wyverns that come at you constantly. He's constantly respawning them. And they're a pain in the ass to kill. Uh, but anyways, I would like, just get it to where you, you know he's right there, but you can't see him on the screen. And then I would fucking shoot my arrows or at, throw my axes and use the time bomb. That's the only way to kill them off. But anyways, they do have like where you can go in higher levels if you want to but it's just 10 times harder so what's the point you know uh, of doing that there's not unless you wanted to get higher in magic or whatever I never did that I just wanted to go through the game you should be able to get as high as you can in your magic without having to do that but you can't you're only allowed like your first or second tier in the magic before you get to the end of the game so it was kind of pointless. Uh, uh, the game I like, you know, for the most part, the first part of the game. After that, I hated the game. It was just a pain in the ass to fucking get through it. Uh, you don't have any decent spells. You don't have any decent weapons, except for, like I said, the bow or the throwing axe. The only decent weapons in the whole entire game. I never got swords or anything like that because I knew it wouldn't do any good. You have too many of them fuckers throwing shit at you. Especially the worst enemy in the fucking game. Oh my god. The worst fucking enemy. The wizards. I could deal with just about any of the others but them fucking wizards. Oh my god. Because they would jump all over the place and shoot fireballs at you. And kill you in like two seconds. I hated them fuckers. Anybody else, I was fine with. But them fuckers, nope. I hated them motherfuckers so bad. Anyways. Darkstone. If you really want a challenging game, this is a game for you. If you like dungeon crawlers. But otherwise... I don't think it should be that hard. Diablo is not anywhere near to that ridiculously, insanely hard. So, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's okay. It's okay for a one-time try. But I do not recommend the game. It had so many flaws in it. Uh, and I know there's people who really like the game. But I'm sorry. There's just too many flaws in that game. Uh, that the developers need to work on if they're going to try to do another version of, if they ever do. But it, it was a Diablo ripoff, so I don't think they will. Uh, there. Oh, one other thing about the game that I like that Diablo doesn't do. Uh, in Diablo, you have to click on your enemy to get him for your character to kill that enemy. In this game, you don't. It automatically targets the enemy. Uh, I like that. Uh, because then I don't have to fucking... Uh, in Diablo, my character will sometimes... You know, you have to really be right on top of that enemy. Or your character is going to run up right into that fucking mess of enemies. And I hated that about Diablo. I don't want to have to fucking push down on a button or some shit to make them hold still so I could shoot. That's dumb. That's one thing I didn't like about Diablo and that I liked about this game uh, was how your character could use a bow or an axe because it automatically targets the enemy. Anyways, like I said, unless you're hardcore in the dungeon crawler games, I don't recommend this game. It's not that fun. It's okay at first, but then it gets redonkulous after that. Uh, let's get on to your B-movie reviews.
All right, movie hawks. Moving on to your B movies. Um, this week is Fantasy Week. Now, back in the, I say early 2000s, you had this craze of kitty fantasy movies. Um, what I mean by that is with the success of the Harry Potter movies, uh, Holly Weir tried to cash in on that success by trying to create a lot of kitty fantasy movies. Uh, the only one that they were successful with was of course The Chronicles of Narnia. And even then it was a half-ass success. But you had a ton of our others like Stardust, The Golden Compass, Aragon, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Kitty fantasy, not high fantasy. And the reason why most of these all pretty much bombed and they didn't do sequels to them is because people did not want to see these kitty fantasies. They wanted high fantasy like Lord of the Rings. Uh, that's why it did so well. You know, they wanted to see stuff that was written by authors in the 80s like the Dragonlance novels, the Forgotten Realm, Drizzt O'Duran novels, uh, Anne McCaffrey, Piers Anthony, you know, all these writers from the 80s or whatever that did fantasy and sci-fi. That's what everybody wanted to see. But no, they can't do that, even though we know they can. They did Lord of the Rings, so they can do it. They just don't want to do it because they're too cheap. It costs a lot of money to do it. Uh, so they, instead, they fell back on these newer writers who are doing all these kitty fantasies and books or whatever. And nobody really wanted to watch that. But they did it anyway. And they all pretty much fall, especially that Golden Compass. I am not into steampunk. I think it's a stupid genre. I hate it. But there are fans of that genre. More power to them. I just don't like it. I think it's a dumb fantasy uh, genre. You know, I, I'm not sure if it's a type of sci-fi fantasy industry you know, during industry times, blah, blah, the industrial age. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't see the appeal at all. It looks dumb. That's why the Golden Compass was a huge bomb. But the thing is, a lot of these TV shows and shit like that, even though they are extremely unsuccessful and huge bombs, Holly Weird keeps trying to pump them out. Nobody wants to see see that shit. But they keep pushing it anyway. Alright. So. <clears throat> we're going to do a couple of the kitty fantasies from the early 2000s. The first one that I watched was the Spiderwick Chronicles. Now there's a whole series of books of these. 
And uh, I think Nickelodeon is the one who did the movie or whatever. Back when Nickelodeon was the thing for kids or whatever. In the 90s and early 2000s. I don't really hear anything about Nickelodeon anymore. So I don't know what happened to him. Anyways. This starred Nick Nolte and Mary Louise Parker. Um, it was done in 2008 and it made about 165 mil which really wasn't that great at all at the box office but the movie is basically about a woman who's getting a divorce <clears throat> And she inherits this old house, mansion, or whatever from her aunt. I think, I know it's the kid's aunt, but I'm not sure if it's her aunt. I think it is. But, anyways, she inherits this house. Uh, and her she's trying to make a new life for herself apparently you know the father has moved on found a new woman new family blah 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 <clears throat> which is always the case with single mothers isn't it but anyways so, uh the kid, one of the kids don't like her. There's the twin set of boys and a girl. Uh, the girl's the oldest and the twin boys. One is, uh, I don't know. He's very, he's like a beta male. And the other one is just angry all the time. Uh, he's angry that you know, his parents got a divorce, blah, 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 the typical thing. And the story is, is that they move into this place, and if the, the angry boy, he finds out that there's fairies and goblins and blah, 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 a whole fairy world, when he finds his book and starts reading it, that his great-great-grandfather or some shit wrote, <clears throat> and uh, apparently he was friends with the fairies blah 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 now the aunt the aunt isn't dead she's just been put in a, like a mental hospital because she was spouting off about the fairies and shit so they put her in a mental hospital for you know for her to be there for the rest of her life now, it's the typical, you know, uh, gosh, I wish, you know, I could inherit something from some family member, like an old-ass Victorian mansion. Everybody wishes they could have that. So they do this all the time when it comes to these kid fantasy movies and shit. Um, While reading this book, he finds out that this there's this Goblin King, which is Nick Nolte. He wants the book because with the book, it has a bunch of secrets about the fairy world. And he thinks he can troll the fairies and the fairy all the fairy creatures if he has all the secrets that's in the book. So he's trying to get the book from this family. Uh, the kids go see the aunt at the mental hospital. She tells them, oh, you got to take this book to my daddy. My daddy's the one who can fucking help you. He, he's in the fairy land. He's not dead. They took him there because he knew too much. So they find out that they can summon a griffin who used to be the pet of the great, great granddaddy. And the pet takes a, shows up, takes him to see great-great-granddaddy. 
and great great granddaddy doesn't want to destroy the book but he realizes that it's causing too much trouble for his family so he uh he figures out a way um to destroy the book but come to find out the book they brought with them isn't the book. They were tricked. And the book is still at the house. So they got to go back and destroy the book. They get back. Uh, I have this big fight with the goblins and the goblin king. And then instead of destroying the book, uh, the goblin king transforms to this bird and there's this hobgoblin outside which you previously meet in the film and he snatches the bird and then eats the goblin king as this bird end of movie everyone's safe and sound the book is fine everything's good and go that's the end of the movie okay it wasn't the best of movies it was just okay, but it wasn't horrible either. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like probably was Seth Rogen was the Hobgoblin, and I can't stand Seth Rogen. He's a piece of crap uh, writer, and he's not a comedian as far as I'm concerned. He sucks, uh, and all his movies pretty much suck. Except for one. I did like the 40 year old virgin. Hate me all you want. But that movie was hilarious. When I first saw it. Anything since then that he's done. He's, it's just. Sex, 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 sex. That's all he does. Sex jokes. He's an idiot. Can't stand the guy. Anyways. He's a beta male. Uh, the movie like I said. It's okay. It's not horrible, but it wasn't really that great either. And of course, you know, Disney tried to uh, cash in on this years later, not too long ago, when they did that Artemis Fowl movie. Why? Because it's literally almost the same fucking thing. You know, them dealing with the fairy world and blah, 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 blah. It's the same shit. I don't know if it was the same writer. I didn't look it up, but uh, you know, the two writers must have co, you know, talked about each other's books or some shit, because it's pretty much the same crap, almost. Uh, you know, just a little different twist here and there, but it's them dealing with the fairy world for the most part. That's basically the same thing. Anyways. I give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. It's okay for a one-time watch, but it's not like the best of movies. Alright, moving on. The next one I watched was called Inkheart. And it had Eliza Bennett and Brandon uh, Fraser in this movie. Uh, it was done as well in 2008. It didn't do nearly as good. It only made about $62 million. Again, not really good at the box office. The movie was basically about someone who could read a book and make the characters out of the book come to life in real life. Like it trans ports them from the book into our world. But the consequence of doing that is that someone from our world has to take their place in the book. Now the story is, is Brandon does Brandon's character does this uh, when his kid, his little girl is still a baby and his wife ends up going into the book and he pulls out a couple of villains and this other guy who's like um, one of them fire 
performers, you know, you know, carnival performers, the fire people, you know, can blow fire out of their mouth, that kind of shit. Anyways, uh, years have passed. He's been looking for the book again so he can read his wife out of the book. His daughter doesn't know about it. She's a teenage, a little teenager now, like 12 or 13, supposedly. Uh, she eventually figures it out, though. Uh, well, not completely. She knows something's going on. She just don't know why. Because he ends up finding the book. Again, a book that's really hard to find. Copy of it. He finds it in this bookstore. And uh, goes to his Aunt Lily's. Or her Aunt Lily, sorry. Or, or Ellen. I think her name's Ellen. Her Aunt Ellen. They go to her place in Italy. And then the bad guys show up and kidnap them. Um, Brandon Fraser, Fraser has to save them. The fire dude betrays him by doing this, telling him where they're at. And then he tries to help him out because he got scrubbed by the bad guy. Go figure. Uh, the bad guy had actually kept one copy of the book and read out his, or had someone who they call Silver Tongues. They're very, supposedly very rare that can read characters out of a book. And he's been having this one who can only, I don't know, he stutters so the characters don't come out fully formed sometimes. So, He's been having this guy read characters out books, and he's had him read out his wife. He didn't know it. Uh, but they all eventually figured out that he got his, he read out his wife. Brandon Fraser, he tries to save both his daughter and his wife, because come to find out, his daughter is a silver tongue too. And now she can read characters out of a book as well. But she's also an inspiring writer. So she can write uh, and then read it out loud and make it come to life. Blah, blah, blah. So in the end, she's writing a secret ending to Inkheart. A new ending. And uh, changes everything while she's reading it out loud. And everybody lives happily ever after, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody goes back where they're supposed to be. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. This is not a new concept. It's been... I'm not sure if it's been done in, in the films before, but it's reading a book and magical crap coming out of a book, blah, blah, blah. It's been done before. So... I think that's one of the reasons most people didn't bother watching it. Uh, was it a bad movie? Eh, it was okay, but again, it was it was kiddie fantasy. It's very kiddish. It's for kids, uh, little teen teeny boppers, between 10 and 13 years old. It's just it's really kiddish. Uh, it's okay for a one-time watch. I give it a thumbs up and a thumbs down. It's okay, but it's not really the greatest of movies. Uh, check it out if you want. I'm just, I'm not real big into kiddie fantasies, but I can watch one every now and then. It doesn't bother me. Uh, anyways, that's all I have for you this week. If you have any thoughts about, or anything about what I talked about earlier in the video, please leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you can think of any underrated movies or movies you think I may never have heard before, please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below and I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So until next time, I told you you'd be told the truth and you've just been told. <laughs>